The question here is about a difficult to spell name. What's my opinion about that? And I always like to use the example of, oh, you have a difficult to spell name? Have you ever heard of Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> Was he able to get famous and does he care? What, what's Arnold Schwarzenegger's company name or brand? Is it, did he pick an easier name like Arnold the Muscle Man or Conan, I guess? But no, everyone knows Arnold, you know, Terminator, maybe, you know, Governator. I don't know. But like everyone knows Arnold by, you, you, oh, you know, Ar they don't go Arnold the actor on Google. No, they Arnold Schwarzenegger. They, they misspell it on Google and Google knows. It's, you know, ever since spell check was, became popular and Google's, did you mean, right? I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and Google this right now so that you can take a look. All right, here we go. Google Arnold. I don't even have to, right? Okay. Um, but if I, if I typed in uh, Schwarzenegger, I'm just going to type it out, right? Like, it doesn't matter. Google, did you mean showing results for, you know, and um, people also ask, right? Uh, but I, I will say George, George, say someone, Simon said George, Cow. I'm actually really curious. I'm, I'm probably not going to pop up. <laughs> lots of, lots of other George cows, but you know what, if someone put George cow marketing, well, that's, that's me, but yeah, there you go. So, um, but you, you, actually, I, I, I invite all of you to try this out, George C O W marketing, and see if see if I pop up. And if, if I if I pop up, maybe it's on the first or second page of results. Please click on my website because that'll train Google to uh, to know. Oh, cow! When people say George C O W, they mean they mean this guy. Um, but see, that's what happens is if your name is hard to spell, um, I think. Yes, you can. You can. You can go. You can go into the strategy of coming up with some clever, easy to remember brand. You know, I I could have been like, you know, um, uh, George. Well, I mean, you know, essentially, I have several brands. I have Joyful Productivity, right? I have Authentic Marketing. I have blah blah blah. blah. It's like each one of your offers, if it gets big enough, is its own brand. So you can certainly, but my overall overall brand, I think the safest, most longest lasting, future proofed overall brand is your name. So I really, because uh, I, I I've seen people say, well, I'm my name is hard to spell, George Cow, and and so I'm gonna say I'm gonna call myself George uh, San Francisco Life Coach, which is terrible because I'm about about to move out of San Francisco, right? It's totally not future proof, or 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 George the life coach for retirees or something like that, like that maybe that. And then guess what? Three years later, I decide, you know, I actually really want to work with teenagers. Darn, I already have this brand that's, so like forever, I will be, I probably won't change my last name or first name. So I'll, so please, I would say my recommendation to your overall brand, stick with your name, no matter how hard it is to spell because people, so let me give you some more, uh, some more insight on this. If your name is hard to spell, guess what? You have the opportunity in every podcast interview, in every video to speak, to say, all right, my name is George Cow. I've, I've done this all my life. That's why I know what I'm talking about. My name is George Cow. That's spelled K-A-O. I say that as often as I can. And guess what? Then the audience go, wow, this guy was great. K-A-O. Remember that. Remember that. The irony is that if you're, if you're hard to spell name, if you help them spell it whenever possible they will keep practicing it and by practicing it they literally remember you better than someone whose name is if my name was george smith don't forget me because they don't have to practice smelling smith they know how to say like who's that guy's name but if they practice going k-a-o k-a-o they practice twice now they much more like their brain is much more like they remember my name than than something else so yes help your audience whenever possible practice spelling your name Okay. So, um, so that's, that's, and then, and then I have one other thing to say about, right. So some social media profiles allow you to have like a maiden name or an alternate spelling of your name. 
I, I think Facebook does. I maybe Instagram does. Or um, so you could use those fields to put a common misspelling of your name. I think that's that's a good idea too. And uh, and also if but if you don't have that field in a particular profile, in the description of the profile, you can put the commonly misspell common misspelling of your name, and that way it's easier to find you. But ultimately, um, the people who are meant for you, the people who somehow match with your energy signature they get drawn to you for some reason maybe the topic you talk about the combination of the topics you talk about plus the way you talk about it and you're just your overall vibe and your values they're going to practice spelling your name they're going to be like oh this person's name is really unique. oh it's not oh it's not simon it's simeon okay maybe they're they're going to notice those things and they're going to by by note by squinting their eyes and noticing the misspelling it imprints on the brain more powerfully than if your name was the regular spelling of Simon Smith or something like that. That's going to just wash over them. But oh yeah, oh it's Simeon, not Simon. Got it. Oh it's it's um, Smythe, not Smith. Oh, that's interesting, right? The imp imp impression in the brain. So and like I said, help them practice. Use those alternate fields when you can, and just keep growing your brand and audience. And people, I promise you, one day you will be like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so I hope this is helpful. And I have an actual example right now. Um, I'm happy to show you someone who is live on the call with me right now and gave me permission to do this. So uh, their name is Tamsin Young, and I'm going to misspell it. Okay. Tasman Young. Okay. I'm press enter. This is a misspelling. Google already knows. Oh, did you mean Tamsin Young? And is this the person? Yes, this is the person that I'm talking about. So, you know, and I bet if I said, um, I don't know, Tasmin Young, I don't know. I'm just going to do a really, okay, Yasmin. That makes more sense, right? That that makes more sense for you. Because Tam, Tamzine sounds more like Yasmin. So that makes more sense. So, um, yeah, but like I said, a typical misspelling of the name, uh, Taz, Tam, Tamsin Young. I'm going to try that too. There you go. See, Google's smart enough. Come on, don't give give Google a little bit more uh, credit for this stuff. But yes, so I hope that helps as an, as a real example right now.